Welcome back, Tangerinis. If you're new to our channel, I'm Jordan, this is Maddie, and together we are Tangerine Travels. We're an American couple who moved to Mexico about two years ago after selling everything we owned in the US. Now that we've had some time to reflect on that situation and the whole experience, we can safely tell you the things that we did well when we moved and the things that we messed up on. First, let's talk about the mistakes we made when moving to Mexico. Probably the biggest mistake we made was not giving ourselves enough time for preparations to sell almost literally everything that we owned, do paperwork, figure out banking, all these types of things. I believe it was about six months that we gave ourselves to do all of this and it still felt like a whole big bundle of chaos towards mm -hmm. the end. The last couple weeks, it, it felt like we hadn't done anything, even though we did do so much. Yeah, I think we technically gave ourselves about a year, but it, we didn't really get our butts in gear until the last six months. Because it seems like so much time, uh -huh. and then it just starts dwindling right before your eyes until we were... I, I think it was like the last weekend we were like trying to figure out how we could get pesos out, things that we wanted to do with the bank, like power of attorney and... Uh, payable on death. Payable on death and things like that. And like, we still didn't get all, all of the things that we needed to have gotten done, done. And that leads us to the next point, which is not making a list of things, important, necessary things that we needed to do before crossing the border and after crossing the border, like getting Mexican car insurance. <laughs> yeah, so we're driving to Mexico, our, our first our first day on the road. By the way, who drives like this? We'd be sort of <laughs> all over the road. <laughs> we're driving to Mexico and like we're a few miles or something away from the border. And we're like, okay, well, we need to get Mexican car insurance. Uh -huh. So we're, we're calling our uh, US insurance company, Geico, and be like, okay, how do we get Mexican car insurance? That's just one example of the things that should have made it on that list of what we needed to do before leaving and then after leaving. I, I feel like this is making it seem like we didn't really prepare, we didn't know what to do, and we weren't planning. We were, that whole time we were, watching videos and in Facebook groups and asking questions, but there were just so many things that slipped through the cracks or that just took more time than we expected. But coming back to that list, we knew we needed to get Mexican car insurance. We knew we needed to get our tourist visas yeah. after crossing the border. We knew we needed to get a temporary vehicle import permit, but because we didn't have a list, we forgot about those things at the time we needed to get it done. Yeah, uh, and I mean, it was just like, I remember crossing the border, we were so- Flustered. Like flustered and also excited because mm -hmm. they didn't search the car, because sometimes <laughs> they can do that, like, you know, and take an inventory of whatever you have. They didn't do that. They didn't have any problems with Laska or her paperwork. So we were like, so thrilled that we got through with no issues at all. And then we completely spaced on getting the, tourist visa so then we had to come back and we didn't have pesos and we didn't have us dollars and like it, all these bas <laughs> basically <laughs> something that should have taken 15 minutes ended up taking two hours uh -huh. with the tourist visa and then we were supposed to get our temporary vehicle import permit and because <laughs> We were just disorganized and without a list. That ended up being a huge ordeal as well. Yeah. You know something I would do if we were to do this all over again? I would make whatever that list is of things that I think we needed to have done and then like post it in a Mexico themed Facebook group. Like, hey, am I missing anything important on here? Because you will. Inevitably, you will be missing something important. The next big mistake that we made was continuing our car registration in Arizona. Why was this a mistake? Since it's registered in Arizona, first of all, it's an expensive state to register your vehicle, mm. but also they require emissions testing. So if you need to continue registering it, you may have to go bring the car back to get emissions tested. Also, you need to continue holding on to your US insurance. Which has so, been a huge expense for mm -hmm. us. And it doesn't even do anything. US insurance does nothing for the car in Mexico. So we're basically paying double. So what would have been a better option for us? Registering the car in South Dakota. South Dakota has really great laws for expats like us who are move into Mexico where you can register your car in South Dakota. You aren't required to have any type of residence there. You aren't required to bring the car there in person. They'll mail you your plates anywhere in the U.S. Now that's and another thing with registration in Arizona is that mm. they will only mail the stickers to Arizona. Mm -hmm. We had to pay something like $60 one time for my mom to mail it and have it be tracked and everything to get to us. Mail so a sticker. The sticker, yeah, just absurd. 
but if it's registered in South Dakota, you don't have to carry U.S. insurance. It's cheaper to register it, and you don't have to bring the car back there for emissions or anything. So basically, it makes it a whole lot cheaper to have a car mm -hmm. in Mexico. And easier. The next really big mistake we made was keeping our U.S. phone plan instead of switching right over to a Mexican phone plan. Mm -hmm. uh, we had T-Mobile, we now have Telcel, and we pay between $15 to $25 a month for basically as much data as we need. It works in the U.S., Canada, and Mexico, and comparing that to T-Mobile, we were paying $50 a piece, $100 total. That's just so expensive. We could have saved so much money if we just switched over right away. The last mistake we feel like we made when moving to Mexico was rushing from place to place. We only spent one or two nights in each city and it didn't give us enough time to explore and it was really stressing Alaska. And Let us alone. too. Yeah, us. Like <laughs> so much driving from place to place. Mm -hmm. In our defense, I kind of feel like we had our eyes set on places that weren't very similar to Arizona. We really wanted to get to the beach and to these more desirable places to go, like Mazatlan, Puerto Vallarta, eventually Guadalajara. But yes, I think we should have slowed down. We should have given ourselves at least five days maybe in each place, if not a week, just to like give ourselves some breathing time, allow ourselves the opportunity to get acclimated instead of feeling like it was just like, go, 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 go. We must do this. We must go on, on, on. Okay, so now let's move on to the section of things we did right, our successes when moving to Mexico. One of the best things that we did in preparation of moving to Mexico was doing daily Spanish lessons. Mm -hmm. I can't, I don't even know what the experience would have been like for us if we didn't at least have a moderate grasp on the language and saying it out loud as we were doing audio lessons where you're talking in the lesson instead of just reading things or like doing memorization in your head. I remember at first you didn't want to do the lessons in front of me <laughs> no, because <I> didn't. <laughs> you didn't want anyone hearing you, not even me. Because I was so embarrassed and like timid and scared of making mistakes so I'm glad we did that because it got ourselves even just comfortable saying it in front of each other. Mm -hmm. I do think we could have done more even like I'm glad we were doing, we were so diligent about doing Spanish lessons every single day, but some of my family speaks Spanish, some of our friends speak Spanish. We should have been practicing conversations because I do think that we overestimated our Spanish abilities and then quickly realized that when we got into conversations with people. But if you want to start learning Spanish, our favorite way to learn it is through Rocket Languages. Mm -hmm. We're actually an affiliate. And if you're interested in checking out the course, you can go to tangerinespanish.com and then we'll take you straight to our affiliate link. Yep, that forwards to Rocket Languages. So if you end up getting a course, then we might get a chunk of change from that, which really helps us out to make more videos just like this one. But yes, if you're wanting to move to Mexico, learning Spanish, that is like 100% essential. I don't think people should have the mindset that you're going to learn it just by simply immersing yourself in the culture or through osmosis. It takes such an active effort and daily practice. Maybe we have a different definition of immersion, but I think that's a very good way to learn the language. Uh, but maybe my definition of immersion would be like you're in a Spanish speaking culture, everyone around you is speaking Spanish, you are forced to speak Spanish and forced to communicate in Spanish and forced yeah. to look up everything you don't know yeah. and say it in Spanish. But I think what you're getting at is just the fact that you live in Mexico is not going to make you learn the language. There are so many people who live here who've lived here a decade and hard, mm -hmm. can hardly speak a sentence. And because so, it depends on where you are too. Like uh -huh. if you're going to Puerto Vallarta or Mazatlan or somewhere here, like we live in Puerto Morelos, in the state of Quintana Roo by Cancun and Playa del Carmen, lots of people speak English. So thinking that like, oh, I'll just learn when I go to Mexico, probably not gonna happen depending on where you are and how much of a conscious effort you're making to avoid English. Yeah, you really have to make an effort if you wanna learn mm -hmm. the language. The next thing on our list of things that we did right was setting a date for when we were gonna leave. Our liftoff date, if you will. <laughs> Months in advance, we knew the exact date and we were not pushing that back. This was our deadline, our hard, fast deadline. And that, it was for a number of reasons, but I'm glad we did that because that leads into our next point, which is not letting our families 
convince us not to go to Mexico because oh my goodness once we told our family mm -hmm. they basically tried to do everything to convince us not to go they were sending us articles every day on like the terrible things that were happening in Mexico and lecturing us and just constantly trying to think of reasons that would persuade us not to go I'm glad we had that date of when we were gonna leave mm -hmm. and we didn't let them push us around to changing it and I'm glad we didn't listen to them either because as we know now and as they know now it is not all as it's not so bad in Mexico like the news media might have you believe. Yeah, this reminds me of one of my favorite authors, Jim Rogers, who's literally traveled, he's driven around the word world twice, once on a motorcycle, once in a vehicle. And he said no matter where he went on earth, it was always this place is safe, but our neighbors are dangerous. <laughs> no matter where it was so <laughs> and you know we've seen that too in mexico mm -hmm. where it's like when we lived in the u.s everyone was so scared of mexico because mexico is so scary and dangerous and then now being in mexico we kind of hear that sentiment from mexicans about their south of the border neighbors mm -hmm. the next thing i think we did right was planning to take as little of our humanly earthly possessions as possible and part of this was simply because we have a very small car it's a prius c which is the compact version of the prius so we really didn't have room to take a whole lot of stuff but i'm glad that we didn't go the route of like hiring a moving company and taking all of the things that we owned or bringing a trailer or bringing a trailer yeah. or something like that yeah because as much as we brought we've still pared down less and less and less and i do i get that for somebody who's planning on moving to like one place in particular it might be cheaper to bring all of your furniture that you've already bought and everything like that but for wanting to travel a little bit from place to place throughout the mm -hmm. country like we have i'm so happy that we didn't take more than we needed something else that i think was very important for us that we did right was signing up for a charles schwab bank account while in the u.s <laughs> Some of the reasons why this is so good is because there's no account minimums, there's no monthly maintenance fees, they pay a higher interest rate than almost any other bank account. Also, the big one is they don't charge ATM fees and they give unlimited ATM refunds worldwide. That's a really big deal. One downside to Schwab though is we've heard some stories from other expats who've actually gotten their accounts shut down because they said this account is not made for people living outside of the U.S. Thankfully to for us, we travel around enough that even though we're spending quite a bit of time in Mexico, we also go to the U.S., Canada, we've gone to Europe, etc. So, Yeah, and we also try to be a better customer for them mm -hmm. by trying to keep a little bit more money in our accounts and also trying to do as few ATM withdrawals as possible to yeah. minimize those ATM fees for them. By the way, this sounds like this video is like sponsored or something by Charles Schwab, but it's totally not. That's just the bank account we picked and used and we think it was a, a good decision for us to make. But where are you at Schwab? Yeah, where are you at Schwab? Come on. <laughs> Next thing I think we did right was traveling around the country to find the city that felt most like home, the cities that we've wanted to spend more time in. We see it so often where people are like, all systems go to wherever the place is in Mexico. Often it's one place they've vacationed at and liked. Or that they've never been before, but they've just heard good things about. And that's maybe one of the greatest successes that we've had in this whole experience is just going from place to place because you would be surprised what it's actually like when you get there and how you feel about the place. And mm -hmm. we've been surprised by places that we thought we didn't like but ended up loving and places that we thought we were going to be madly in love with and then kind of hate it. So I would recommend that to anybody who wants to move to Mexico is go spend at least a week at least, bare minimum, one week in the place to see if it's really all that you hope it would be. Mm -hmm. And if not, try another place, try another place. Go to many places, because I think the more that anyone tra travels in Mexico, I'm speaking for ourselves, the more we've traveled in Mexico, the more we love it. So, <laughs> and, and the more there is to love about it. This is one of the reasons why we think it's a really good thing that we try to pare down the stuff that we own. Yeah. Because if we had a big trailer full of stuff, we wouldn't be able to unload and load yeah. every time and just go from place to place to place but because we don't have a lot of stuff 
we can more easily travel and experience mm. new places. The next success that we had about moving to Mexico was devouring as much information and videos and content as we possibly could about Mexico, and that includes things like joining Mexico-themed Facebook groups and asking questions and reading other people's experiences and things, even though I don't think there was any amount of information that we could have consumed that would fully prepare us, and well, we know that for sure now. I still think that learning all that we did set us up for success more than if we were just gonna like go and wing it and hope for the best. <laughs> yeah, I highly recommend watching YouTube videos. Like one of my favorite channels to watch. I hear uh, I've heard so many good things about it, uh, and I really like them too. It's called Tangerine Travels. It's this couple <laughs> who travel around Mexico and make with their videos. husky. Yeah. Don't forget about the husky. She's the star of the show. Laska, are you kidding me? This video is brought to you by Laska, and she says if you're enjoying it, you should subscribe to our channel and give her treats. <laughs> The next thing on our list that we did right when moving to Mexico was being flexible and open to things not going quite as planned. I'm personally very proud of myself for how this happened and like the growth that I've had in this department because before coming to Mexico, everything I did in the day went on my calendar. Appointments, I scheduled everything. So much was planned out weeks in advance. And so coming to Mexico, it was hard to let that go, but I think really a liberating thing for me to just go, like we need to roll with punches because if we get stressed out over everything that didn't go as planned, I would just be one big ball of stress all the time. <laughs> I think it, this applies for anyone moving to another country. You just have to be flexible and expect things to not go as planned. Yeah. And that leads us into the last thing that I think we did really well when we came to Mexico, a success that we had when moving here, was being open and willing to embrace and understand the Mexican culture, even though it was almost always scary or awkward. Like, one perfect example I can think of this, there were so many times where we were like, is this someone's house or is this a restaurant? and kind of mm -hmm. not wanting to step through the doors because how awkward would that be if you walked in and like, un menu por favor, and they're <laughs> like, uh, this is my house. <laughs> Just as a note of clarity, it often is a restaurant. It's a, in Mexico, there are so many like casual places that are in someone's like front yard or patio or even inside their house, but it doesn't mean it's not a restaurant. So I'm really glad that we did that because the more we've stepped out of our comfort zone, the more free we feel to do that and the more we can really enjoy all these little, these tiny aspects of, tiny or big aspects of Mexican culture that are just so different, but awesome. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely some things we could have embraced faster or uh -huh. a little bit more, and there's things we're, we're still working on, but... It's a process. Yeah, it, it definitely is, and I don't know, I, I think it would be hard just to go all out and Totally. Like dive in the deep end completely. But anyway, if you enjoyed this video, we hope you will subscribe to our channel to see other videos that we create about our life in Mexico and sometimes other places in the world. And if you want to see all of our mistakes and failures and successes from the beginning, <laughs> I failed at saying failures. <laughs> <laughs> and if that's just not a perfect picture of our lives. <laughs> but anyway, if you want to see all of those things, we'll link to our binge watch everything playlist on the end screen here in just a moment. You can click on that and see all of our videos in order. Uh, one more thing before you go. Gong that bell so you will be the first to be notified whenever we upload a new video or start a live stream. And we'll see you very soon.